Thank you for tuning in to another episode of InRange. We're doing another armor penetration test today, but with the venerable M1 Garand. I don't think the M1 will go through armor. It's uh, not pointed at all, Yeah. and I can't throw it very fast. I don't really? think we're going to get the velocity required. You don't have a proper bayonet on it either. True. Remember, the bayonets were longer at hardened, one point. Hardened steel. Yeah. That's like an AP core. Yeah. That, that might go through. Do you think the shortening of the bayonet was so you could get more velocity to get through the steel? Um, no, I think it was more about uh, reducing, by reducing the length of the bayonet, mm -hmm. you reduce the pot, the potential for it to bend instead of penetrate straight through. That makes sense. However, we're not testing the actual Garin going through armor today. We're testing oh. its ammunition. Oh, so that might work better. We've got two rounds. This is Greek M2 ball, HXP. It's essentially it's the equivalent of everything US M2 ball. In fact, in many ways, this is better than Lake City. I've used this, yeah. it matches, it's good ammo. Great but ammo. It is M2 ball. There's nothing about that besides that. Quick side note, all the HXP stuff is great. Yes. There's been surplus 303 Greek HXP. Mm. Awesome ammo as well. So the Greeks do good ammo. Yeah. But then, okay, we know this isn't going to go through the steel. Yeah. No. But this, black tip, 30 odd six. So this was used heavily through the wars. Yep. Um, and we, I'm assuming, I haven't cut these to bisect them, but we did a test already with 308 black tip and it went right through one of our Air 500 plates. Yeah. Considering that the bullet construction, projectile construction is going to be similar, if not identical. Yeah. We know we're going to get higher velocity out of 30 odd six. Probably not much higher, but a little bit. But that means we know it's going to go through one plate. Yeah. So what we're going to do is stack two plates together. One All time right. we, we did a video already with them apart. This day we're going to put them right next to each other. How far do we get through two of those plates? And these are three eighth inch plates. Mm -hmm. So we're now talking about three quarters of an inch of hardened steel armor. Yep. Courtesy That's of Mitch from MOA Targets. We bought them, but at a discount. So thank yeah. you, Mitch. Let's go see what happens. Okay. So our first shot is our control. This is just the HXP Greek M2 ball. We know this isn't going to do much, but we have to have a control on the plate. So let's do that. Thirty out six AP black tip, three quarters of an inch of AR five hundred plate. I don't think it's going to get all the way through, but we're not sure. Let's see. Well, all right. we got a, okay, so obviously the first ball round didn't do anything. Flat, nothing. It's not a dimple even. You're right. It's just yeah. some copper jacket. Yeah. Uh, as we predicted, it went right through that first plate. Yes, it did. Just like the 308 did. No surprise there whatsoever. The question is, what did it do to the second plate? What did it do to the second plate? Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> nothing. Almost nothing. Really nothing. There's a little tiny dimple. That, that's less of an impact than it feels like the ball. Well, no, there is a dimple. And yeah, yeah cause what happened was the AP core made that dimple. Remember the AP core is substantially smaller in diameter than the overall bullet. It is. But it ran out of oomph. <laughs> uh, it ran out of oomph, didn't it? And then what's interesting is we've got the full size entry, but the exit hole is just the, basically just the tip of the AP core. If you compare that to the exit hole we had on our 308 AP, the 308 blew out this you know full diameter exit hole. And I think what prevented that here was the fact that there was another plate behind it that just stopped everything dead. Yeah, it did. And then this is the second plate that was stacked behind it. Right. And boy, there's not little much of a tiny dimple. Yeah, a little it bit. Almost looks like there's a chunk of the nose of the, the core kind of welded into the right side there. Really interesting. All right, back. All right, so I'd like to hear what your input is on this, but my thoughts on this are this is a little different than what I expected. Honestly, um, I, we haven't, I've never seen, I'm sure there are people who have done this, but I've never seen anyone doing this, like increasingly thickness or changing angles or the kind of stuff we're doing with this experiment. And increasing the thickness to double that, I didn't expect it to go through, but I also didn't expect it to lose so much of its oomph that the second plate was essentially not impacted, especially because when we did single plates, man, it sailed right through. I, yeah, I was expecting more of a, more damage to the second plate. Yeah, it really goes to show you that as the steel gets thicker, it really changes the effect and dynamics of that projectile going through it. Yeah, indeed. Which is really interesting. And this is why you get into the debates about increasing thickness, changing angle, all that stuff. You wanna put in, you wanna take one more shot of AP through just a single plate? Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that and then we can compare the holes.
And presto, it's got another hole in it. Yeah, I'm glad you recommended doing this because um, we already saw what the hole looked like in a 308. We hadn't seen an exit hole with a 30 odd six out of the steel. And we did see, once we changed the thickness, man, that changed the dynamics entirely. Kind of looks the same on the front. It does. Does not look the same on the back. No. The single plate has this big full diameter hole, bloom right through it, mm -hmm. as opposed to the little dinky hole. Yeah, when we had a second plate behind it. This is the exact same black tip 30 out size ammunition right out of an in-block clip. Yep. So this is uh, the difference when the steel gets thicker, the dynamics change a lot. Yeah, I think you get to a point with this mm -hmm. where once it's gone through most of the material, mm -hmm. it requires less, like it's got the inertia to keep going and just open up that hole and, yep. and force the rest of the bullet through. Where when you've got the extra plate, all of a sudden that kills the momentum at, or that kills you know, Let's forward, go with them. <laughs> yes, forward movement of the, yes. the, the the AP core. Yep, and it just stops. Yeah, it's amazing. Let's take a look at that. So, so here's our exit hole for two plates stacked, and here's our exit hole with only one plate. Very different. And if we flip this around, it's kind of cool to me that up here on the the double plate one, you can almost see like the exact profile of the AP core that it has forced into the steel. Yeah. And, and here, you don't see that so much on the other one because it, well, you don't see the profile because the whole thing went right through. Well, I find that these AP tests, when we first started them, I thought they were gonna be curious. They're turning out to be far more interesting than I ever anticipated. Yeah, um, me too. As we're changing the dynamics of just using one plate, doing two plates, or doing different types of ammunition, coming to find out that the uh, dynamics of this are something that you don't see a lot of. Um, uh, this is a really curious result. Um, guys, I hope you like this kind of stuff. This stuff isn't free. We did get a good deal from Mitch and Mway Targets on these plates, but we did buy them with Patreon money. It's you guys that keep this channel alive and were enabled us to buy those plates to do this. Now the ammo was donated in this regard, so I appreciate that. But um, actually destroying plates like this is not a free endeavor. And thank you for actually funding a project like this. Hopefully you find it interesting. If you're not a Patreon, please consider it. Um, if you can't, we understand. Just subscribe to one of our multiple channels. You can find them all at inrange.tv. Thanks, and more importantly, I was just gonna point out that M1 yeah. was Patreon funded too. Oh, the rifle is, yeah. And when we bought that, we're like, hey, we're gonna do a bunch of stuff with this M1. And guess what, it's still coming back. Yeah, you've seen this M1 go through mud tests, dust tests, and now it's being used in AP tests. Grenade launching. Grenade launching All sorts video. of fun stuff with that M1. That's true. So, guys, thank you for making that possible. And uh, more importantly, share with your friends because we want people to see this kind of interesting content and hopefully garner new supporters of InRange TV. Thanks a lot.